Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Laurence and I post art videos once a week. Today I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I did in New York because this vacation that we took was a cultural vacation. We did a lot of stuff related to art. So we visited a lot of museums, a lot of art galleries. I myself did a lot of sketchbook art. So I thought it would be fun to tell you a little bit what I did each day with some pictures or some videos. Kind of a vlog, but not really because it's already passed. <laughs> the first few days we stayed at my uncle's place who lives not too far from Manhattan, but we stayed in his area. We did a couple of hikes there. You may know this sketchbook. This is the Strathmore Mixed Media Sketchbook. This is a hardcover. So what happened is that we stay at my uncle's place for the first three nights and he has a lot of bonsais. I was sitting outside on the porch and I had a good view at one of these bonsais. So I drew this bonsai using my new color tools and some watercolor pencils and I already had a dark background. So I did that on top and I liked the result, but I would have changed the way that I drew the needles, which I did later. So I like the fact that I chose a blue color and a kind of yellow ochre for the highlights. I also like the fact that there were some areas that I left untouched so you could see the background directly. And I kind of, yeah, I like the way that I created the texture and the tree bark. I like the fact that the background is dark. I feel like it's something different for me. But I think that the colors that I chose for the needles, I'm not too sure about them. And I did some blobs of color and then I did some lines so later my uncle asked me if I could give him this page and I was like no 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 I'm gonna draw you something else something better first because this is in my sketchbook and I don't really want to remove pages but also because I wasn't satisfied with this so I did another drawing and I liked that one so much more I used my arches hot pressed watercolor paper pad so the texture was very nice. I created a dark background this time again because I really liked it. And I stayed with the blue for the bark, but this time I used a light blue and a dark blue. And I had some fun creating some shadows and shades in this bark. So sometimes the light blue and the dark blue would merge together. So we would create some nice gradients. And I did some texture in the bark a bit differently this time. And I feel like it looks a bit like a Japanese illustration, which I like a lot. So for the needles, this time I went with two colors. So I used like this fiery red with this yellow. At first I just created some blobs of color that I mixed together. And then over top, I added a bit more texture, a bit more lines. And I like that a lot. I feel like it's like a, a fall tree. It looks like it's on fire also. It's very stylized, which I really like. I forgot there's another drawing that I did in the sketchbook. It's just because it's not at the end. There was a page where I had some color that was already there. You know what I do when, when I have some leftover colors, I just put them on the page. So I had some colors that were taking this whole spread. And I did this on top, this little landscape using my new color tools. So uh, I use my new set of new color tools, which I'm very excited about, which you can see in my latest art haul. Very exciting. And um, I thought that I would maybe add more details in the rocks or in the pond here, but I really like having a good peek at the background colors. So I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. I like that the colors that you see in the pond are the same that you see in the sky. So I feel I feel like it's very interesting and I don't feel the need to work on this one more. On our way to New York, we stopped and we did a hike on the Cascade Mountain. So it's called the Cascade Trail. And it was so fun. It was a very beautiful hike and it was beautiful all the way through. It took a couple of hours to do. I'm not exactly sure how long it was, but I know that we did not do a, a hike that was too long because we wanted to 
preserve our poor knees because we knew that we were going to walk a lot in New York. So we didn't want to start our vacation with a knee injury. That would have sucked. But that hike was very pretty. And when you get to the top, the last maybe kilometer or maybe a bit less than that is just like exposed rocky mountain top. So it was very pretty. It's it was a nice hike. If you ever get the chance to do it, do it. On our first day in Manhattan, we did the touristy stuff. So we visited Times Square, we walked around a little bit. And what was funny is that the second we stepped into Times Square, my boyfriend got taken by like street performers and they were doing this big like humoristic dance slash acrobatic performance and they needed some volunteers to jump over them but they kind of ridiculed them at the same time so it was funny. We did Times Square, we went a little bit to Central Park and then we went to eat at a very nice Mexican restaurant with a lot of vegan options, vegan and vegetarian options. That was good. Then our second day in Manhattan, we had a nice brunch and we went to see some galleries in the area of not Fifth Avenue, but like Madison Avenue. The goal at first was to go to the Met, but first eat brunch, but it took so long to walk to the brunch place that it kind of wasn't worth it to go to the Met anymore. So we just stayed in that area and had a look at some galleries. We went back to Central Park for a few hours. So we just sat on a bench and I had this beautiful view in front of me of this tree. And then there was a little lake and trees on the other side of the lake. So I used my watercolor pencils. I think I also used some Neo Color 2s and some watercolor, regular watercolor. And I taped the edges and I really like this clean look. And yeah, when it was finished, then I added another layer of watercolor pencils, but this one I did not dilute it with water. So you can see some nice lines in the water, some nice texture on the tree. For this one, a thing I really like too is that I played with the negative spaces. So I painted the negative spaces to make some of the trees. And it's something that I haven't really done before. So I'm very happy about the result and I like the look of it. So I think that it's something that I'm going to play around with more. Then on our third day, oh, that was a nice day. On our third day, we went to the Chelsea neighborhood, which is known for its art galleries. So we went to the David Warner Gallery. I don't know if I pronounced correctly, but there was the Yayoi Kusama exhibition. It was so beautiful. So Yayoi Kusama is known for her huge sculptures with a lot of polka dots. It's very graphic. And I wanted to see some of her work in person for such a long time. So yeah, we saw that and then we saw a bunch of different galleries. We drank some good coffee. It was a very eventful day because we walked the whole High Line. We saw the vessel, the shed, um, and then we went to Little Island. It's a public park, a unique urban oasis on the Hudson River. It's a very dreamy place. You feel like you're in a Wes Anderson movie or something like that because of the way that the paths are like zigzaggy and there's different levels and the colors are beautiful. Yeah, so it was very nice. And then after that, we went to the Comedy Cellar, which was one of my dreams. I've always wanted to go to the Comedy Cellar since I knew it existed and we finally went. It was so fun. You have to reserve in advance and you don't know which comedians are gonna play and you get i think it's about five comedians and they they go on stage for 15 to 20 minutes they often go to practice some parts of their future shows so when you get to the club 
they give you an envelope which is sealed. So you put your phone in it and then you seal it and you cannot take your phone for, for the whole evening. So it's very secretive. It's very nice. It was so funny. Everybody was so good. I thought that maybe some comedians were would be not as good as others or some of them would bomb, but everybody was so good. So good. The third day in Manhattan, we finally went to the Met we saw a bunch of different artists. We saw the big classics. So Picasso, Van Gogh, we saw some Monet, we saw everybody. <laughs> and there was the Karl Lagerfeld exhibition also that we saw, which was interesting, but the Van Gogh exhibition was my favorite there. And there also was a small Georgia O'Keeffe exhibition, which was my first introduction to Georgia O'Keeffe, but more on that later. Then we went to the Central Park again and we stayed there for a few minutes before we got invited to see a play on Broadway. So that was very fun. It was a horror play. It's called The Grey House. There's a little bit of singing in there, but almost none, which is good for me because I don't really like musicals. I didn't know what to expect because my only contact with horror was in movies. So I didn't know how they would be able to translate the same feelings but in form of theater play but they did really good it wasn't as scary as a horror movie but it was there was suspense they did wonders with the stage and the lighting and the decor and the costumes it was good so if you can't see it i really recommend it then on the fifth day we walked around i think it's like near soho i don't think it was in soho but a bit higher than soho so that's the day where I went art shopping. So we went to Michael's, we went to the Blick store and something crazy happened in the Blick store. I was looking at some paper pads. I didn't even want to buy them. I was just like touching the paper. So I took a paper pad like this and I just flipped the pages. So I found this picture and it's written a unique photograph by Fred Cray with a number. So we did some research and we found out that Fred Cray is an artist based in New York or Brooklyn. I'm not sure. But what he does is that he leaves these photos all over New York. And if you're lucky, you find one. And there's thousands of pictures like that that he left all over the place. So I found that at first I thought maybe it was like a publicity by the art store or something. I, I didn't realize yet what it was. So I checked another paper pad and I found another one. So same thing, unique photograph, Fred Cray and a number. But then we realized what they were. So I started checking all of the paper pads, but I didn't find any others. What are the chances that I found that? I left the store with a bunch of new art supplies that you might have seen if you watch my latest art haul and these two photographs. Then we went to the Washington Square and I used my new art supplies to draw and paint. And that's when I used my watercolor brush for the first time. We stayed there for a few hours and what I wanted to do this time was to take more notes. So I feel like this one here looks a bit like a finished drawing. And for this one, I really wanted to focus on the values and the shading. And this was meant to be a quick drawing. Turns out that it took a few hours still, but it's way less detailed than that other one. And I like it a lot too. I like how the background is like not detail at all. The only thing that pops is that tree. So yeah, it was a it was a fun drawing and it was a very relaxing afternoon. Oh, and for this one, I used one of my newest watercolor pencils that I got from the brand Derwent, the Ink Dance in the color Amber. And I really liked it because at first I just drew and then at the end I added the water and the color changed a lot when I added the water which was so fun, very unexpected. So yeah, for the tree, I used my watercolor pencil and then for the background, I just used some regular watercolor. On the sixth day in Manhattan, we went to the MoMA and they had this Georgia O'Keeffe exhibition. So they had a huge exhibition of her whole career and it was so interesting. I really like seeing exhibition of 
an artist's whole career because you really see where they started from, how their style changed, how their mediums changed. Kind of makes me realize that it's okay to experiment and to see my style change because you see only the most popular paintings of these artists who have had decades of years of work but you don't really see their early work or you don't see their whole portfolio. You think that they're a master in one specific style and they've done only that style their whole career and that's why they're so much better than you. But in fact, they have experimented. Even if you see Picasso, when he started, his style was so much different that, than the cubism that he's known for. And I kind of identified with Georgia O'Keeffe a lot because we like the same mediums, we are both women, and we like the same subjects, and she experimented a lot. And like me, she did the same paintings over and over again, but in slightly different styles or in different colors. So it was nice to see that this instinct that I had of doing that was also done by established artists. It's kind of validating. And her work is so pretty too, so I really liked it. After the exhibition, I was super inspired and before going to dinner, we stopped at a park for a few hours and I had to draw and paint. So I painted these simple trees, which are a minimalistic rendition of the trees that I'm drawing, but it was inspired by Georgia O'Keeffe's work. This sketchbook, I decided to use it as a sketchbook for sketches because <laughs> I have the tendency to create finished artworks in my sketchbooks. And I think it's because they're big enough for me to do that. I have the space to work on details. So I tend to forget that sketchbooks could be used as a means of taking quick notes quickly sketching, exploring ideas, but not necessarily finishing every pieces. So I kind of forget that, but I feel like this size is small enough that I'm not tempted to create a finished piece of work. And so I feel like this size is so small and you can easily bring it with you when you're out for the day and you bring a minimal amount of supplies and then you're good. And you're kind of forced to take notes in it and not do anything too, too crazy. So the first few sketches, I would say, are part of a series in which I wanted to do something very minimal. I've been very inspired by Georgia O'Keeffe and I think it's her like mid-career work. She did these drawings or paintings of rivers that she saw from the plane. And so she drew them in this kind of way. And I liked it so much, I thought I could do the same thing, but with the trees that I keep drawing. I've been drawing a lot of landscapes and trees, so I thought it would be nice to just focus on the shapes and kind of abstract them a little bit. And also it's a good practice for me to explore different color combinations. So I've been very liking this kind of fiery red recently. So I started with this color combo. So I did two and for these, I used my watercolor pencils. I added water only on the red part and not on the green. Then I did this one. When you start working like this, at least for me, for this specific series, I just kept seeing more and more drawings that I could do. So I have on my phone, I have a thousand pictures of trees that are not pretty. So if somebody goes through my pictures, you're just gonna see trees after trees after trees and they'll be like, this woman is crazy, which I guess they would be right about but in a like, tree lover kind of way. <laughs> yeah, so I did this one, same thing, same colors. This time I added some water on both colors, but then after I added another layer of watercolor pencil in that green mint shade. Uh, I did that, I remember I did that because when I added the water on the green, I felt like the color would be too diluted so it became much paler and there was some areas where there was more water and other less water so the color was uneven so that's why I added an extra layer of pencil and I kind of like this effect so you have a way more uniform I think layer compared to this so it's fun because it allows me to try different textures too 
Now we have the same color palette, but I switched the colors. So the background is now this fiery red and the tree is this green. This time I put water on the red, but not on the tree. And I feel like not putting water on the green was the way to go because the pencil lines look like a texture you would see on a tree. So I feel like it works well. And I love that red, so this way I get to see more of it because it's the background color. It's so pretty. On the seventh day, we went back to Soho. We went to see some galleries in Chinatown. There's a lot of galleries there, so it was very fun. We were in the Two Bridges neighborhood between the Brooklyn Bridge and the Manhattan Bridge, I think. We found this little place that looked very intriguing. So we went in and at first we thought it was a pottery studio. So when we came in, a guy started talking to us and we found out that he's the owner of the place. He told us that the first floor is the pottery studio, but the second floor is an art cafe. So what you do is that you have to reserve a table in advance. And when you get there, you get this menu, but instead of drinks and food, you order some art supplies. So you could order the watercolors, the charcoal, the pastel. They had one table available still. So we went and we did some art. So I obviously ordered the watercolor menu. So they brought me a little plate with a bunch of watercolor paints on it. And my boyfriend ordered the pastel menu, which was a couple of oil pastels. And I also had my watercolor pencils with me. So I was able to use those as well. So I created a couple of artworks. They also give you paper and everything you need. There's a bunch of stuff that you can use to create your own still lives. It's a very inspiring and artsy place, as you can imagine. So it was so fun. Oh, I wish we had that in Montreal. Although I have my own studio, but it's just a nice environment to create in. The first painting that I did, I kind of was inspired by Georgia O'Keeffe again. She's my new favorite artist. If you're familiar with her work, you will know that she, she's more known for her bones and flower close-ups that she's done in the later part of her career. So I put some things on the table. I put a, an old skull and I put a flower in it and I, I painted it. I tried to select O'Keeffe colors. I'm not too satisfied with this one, but it was still fun to do. I did this one, which I feel like is way more Georgia O'Keeffe <laughs> because it's a close up and the, the colors feel a bit brighter which feels like her style a bit more. And I haven't finished this part, like the background is still white, but yeah, this one I like better. In the last maybe half hour, 20 minutes to half hour, I quickly did this sketch. This is my boyfriend working on a table. Some stuff I, I painted, some other stuff I just drew. I tried to work very quick, but yeah. So that's what I created. It was a lot of fun. The name of the place is Happy Medium. So if you're ever in that neighborhood, don't hesitate to go. I know that during the week, they also organize some art classes so you can register to those and do those as well. And during the weekend, they have that art cafe formula. After that, I was so inspired and I still wanted to draw. So we went to another park and I drew some more. Another color palette, so this time we have some blue and the same red. I put the water on the red color in the background, but not on the tree. And I think that I like this color palette a bit less than this. But it's still interesting. I like the fact that there's branches going everywhere. That's nice. Then I changed color palettes again, still keeping that red. But then this time I put the background in this like lilac or mauve color and I also put water everywhere on every section and I quite like the texture that we have on the background. Yeah, it's pretty nice. 
I also like the shape of this tree. The composition is very nice. I feel like this would make a really nice poster, like a big illustration. It would be so pretty. On the eighth day, we saw the Guggenheim Museum, which was another one that I absolutely wanted to visit. It was on my must-see list. I had seen the pictures of that architecture a long time ago and I was very intriguing. So what we did is that we did the museum in reverse. So we took the elevator, we went to the top and then we, we went down. So we kind of saw the exhibition in reverse. So I would recommend starting from the bottom and climbing up instead if you want to see the things in the right order. So, but it was okay. But it was an exhibition on Gego, which is a German artist living in, oh, I forget the country. Anyway, she's well known for her metallic sculptures and she also did some printing it was nice to see her whole journey throughout her life. It was another one of those exhibitions where you could see the whole journey of that artist. And yeah, after that, we walked around in the financial district, which I don't think I would go again. There's not much to see there. You have that famous bowl, but everybody's lining up to take either pictures with the front or the rear end, depending on how funny they are. So. There's that, and yeah, nothing much to see. On the ninth day, we went to the Brooklyn Botanical Museum. We hesitated between the Brooklyn or the Bronx one, and we decided to go to the Brooklyn one just because it's more accessible by Metro. If the Bronx one was more accessible, I think we would have gone to that one because the Brooklyn one is quite small. It's very pretty though, it's just that in Montreal we have a really big botanical garden so I'm used to that one, that size of botanical garden so we did the whole botanical garden in Brooklyn in a few hours um, and compared to Montreal you could do the whole thing but it would be a very long day. But it was still very relaxing I drew a lot there as well. I took a bunch of pictures. When we were at the botanical garden, we saw this bonsai that was a couple of hundred years old. It was a natural bonsai, I think, that was in Japan. They removed it from the soil and they wanted to put it in a pot and I continued growing it somewhere, but then it died and they kept the bark only and it, it was like this sculptural shape like this. So I took a bunch of pictures and I drew it in the sketchbook and I think that I plan on drawing a big version of this. I just need to work on some color palettes and maybe some styles and try different mediums, but it would be so nice. It's so peaceful. It's a beautiful shape. But I like this color combination for sure. At the end of the day, this is when the smog started. You remember the smog that was caused by the Canadian forest fires? Well, it all went to New York and Boston, I think, and Philadelphia and that area. And we started seeing it. We, we wanted to work initially on the um, Brooklyn Harbor. We, we wanted to visit that park and have that nice view of Manhattan, but we really could see the smog we didn't know how bad it would get, but we could see it starting and we were like, meh, we don't really feel like staying outside that much. And that park was so loud. You could hear the cars, you could hear the helicopters. It was not relaxing at all. And I really felt on edge already, so I just wanted to leave as soon as possible, so we, we didn't stay. We left and we found a library where I continued to draw, and later we had dinner somewhere and we went back home. Oh, if you were wondering where we stayed that whole time, we rented a room in an Airbnb. It was expensive, but it wasn't as expensive as a hotel, so it allowed us to stay a bit longer. This was in the greenhouse, I think it was the warm section. It was very pretty. 
lots of different kinds of trees and plants and shadows and stuff like that. So I use some watercolor pencils to create this sketch. And then I just use some, um, some watercolor. And I think that I'm done, but I might later, if, if I decide to, I'm not sure. I might add another layer of watercolor pencils or new color tools just to add a bit more texture, but I haven't decided yet. Oh, and here I also played with the negative spaces to create the greenhouse structure. At first I thought maybe I would paint it, but I like it as it is. So it might just stay that way. Finally, the third and last day that we spent in Manhattan was the worst for the smog. You probably saw the pictures of like the yellow skies and it was pretty disgusting. Well, we were there at that time. It was disgusting and it smelled like smoke. We started wearing our masks again, but this time we put them on when we went outside and when we went inside, then we took them off. So it was kind of wearing masks, but reverse what we're used to. So what we did is that we visited a few galleries We stayed for a couple of hours in a coffee shop and then we went back home early to pack because the next day we had to leave anyway. So we decided to order some food and not go out because the air quality was very bad. Oh, this is so fun. Okay. So this is a drawing that I did in the car on our way back home. And this was inspired by Sandy Hester. Uh, I don't know if you watch her video, but from time to time, she explains that when she's in the car with her husband, she's on the passenger side and she just creates these landscapes, these invented landscapes. And she just takes stuff here and there in the landscape and she builds her own creation, her own created landscape. She's starting with a, an area and then she's gonna add something else that she sees and then 15 minutes later she's gonna see a fun house she's gonna add it in a drawing so it kind of creates these interesting landscapes so i had the chance to do that i've been thinking about doing that for a long time it's just that i was scared that i would get nausea in the car because sometimes i have travel sickness but that's when i read so i didn't know if it would happen to me while drying but it didn't at all and i had so much fun and it made the time pass so fast and I never saw this landscape at all. I just saw some things here and there and then that's what happened. There was no water, no water at all. In fact, it was like just a highway and some random fields and mountains in the background. And that's what happened. It was so fun. So for this, I used watercolor pencils. I think I used new color tools and I used watercolor if I remember correctly. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this retelling of my vacation. It's not something that I do a lot and I don't think this is something that I will do too much in the future, but it's just that this specific vacation was full of artsy things. So I wanted to share it with you and share the art that I created also myself there. And yeah, it was very refreshing and very inspiring. So yeah, I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you next week. Take care. Bye.